Well, hello, forensic accountants, and uh, this is version 10 of the Capstone Project, November 2019. Let's get busy. You can do this in Access, but Excel uh, should work really well. So, um, show a screenshot of the first 15 rows in Excel. That's, of course, if you use Excel. Otherwise, your first 15 rows in whatever you use. And so here we go. This is the data. Um, it's in our eCampus, in our capstone folder. Uh, I've opened it, and we want the first 15 rows. You know, whether you call that the first 15 rows or that the first 15 rows, I'm fine. But I do want a screenshot. I use Snagit. Um, in your case, you might want to use the Windows snipping tool. And just show me that you have the first 15 rows of data or the first uh, 16 rows. And we're good to go over there. Now, calculate the number of connections per day. And I want it sorted by date ascending. So we can go here. We can see we have a whole lot of connections. And a connection is an electronic ping of sorts uh, from one computer to the next. And so what I want is I want the total per day and... Uh, we're going to go all the way down here until we get to July 2nd. So, we've done this before. I want the total per day. Insert, pivot table. Got the correct data. Okay. And what we want is we want connections. I do want some of connections, but not all of them. That's a, And I want date over here. And it's given us per month, so we don't really want that. We can actually remove that there. Um, and it looks good over there. Day's date. Let's see what, uh, what happens over here. Oh, I'm happy. So, it'll be a table. And how many? I want the first 10 rows of your results. So, count down until we get uh, to the 10th. Uh, you can do that, and what I would like you to do is change the labels over here. Uh, that could be date, and this could be total connections. Uh, we can format this a little nicely. We can do format cells. Uh, we can do number, no decimal places, with a thousand separator, and we should be good to go over there. So. That would be number two. The two days with the highest number of connections. So it looks like I should have sort of, we should have formatted everything here. We can do format cells, number, thousand separator, no decimals. And now, the two dates with the highest number of connections, you can see we're cruising around maybe, uh, this is under 20,000 per day. Um, I just have to sort, largest to smallest, and we have the two days with the largest number of connections. Uh, prepare a small table, two rows, um, plus the headings. So a row for that, a row for that, sum of connections, sum of connections, that would work. And the average number of connections per day for the period under review. So we need to go here. Oops, we need to get the average per day. And in order to do that, let's see whether I can take connections down here. I don't think this will work. Um, no. So, what you need to do is you need to calculate the average over here. Excel has got a function insert, uh, it's not here, formula, insert function. Excel has got a function where you can uh, calculate the average for the numbers from there down to there. Sorry, I don't mean to make you dizzy. And there should be about a little over 90 rows because it's a three month period. Um, and so it'll be this sum and the average can you can put the average twice once here and once here and that would be number three 
Now, if you write a short narrative, number over here, short narrative, whether the two high connection days had the symptoms of a successful or an attempt, attempted cyber attack, and a cyber attack would be, uh, one symptom would be, many more connections than normal, uh, they are trying to break into our system. Uh, consider the remote and the local IP numbers. So are we getting lots of connections from one particular foreign computer? Right over here, the remote. So this, it's a shortened form of the uh, uh, address. Are we getting lots of connections from one particular IP address uh, coming into us? Consider the date with the third highest number of connections, that's here. And does it look like this might be a small scale cyber attack? And you can see that that is September 20th. And so what you need to do is scroll down to September 20th. Don't mean to make you dizzy. And when we get there, to see whether we have any large totals over here, which would be this computer trying to make a connection with our computer. And I think we do have a number here, 3,000, 5,000. There might be one that's higher than that. And I think the answer here, there it is. And I think the answer here is yes. Uh, that's part one. Part two. What we have is we have employees and we have details about whether they accessed our system, yes or no. So we have a case of, and that was my niece, we have all employees, uh, there are just over 200 here. Some of them have been terminated and when I go in here, I actually want to see whether any of my employees that have been terminated have a no here. And then I'm even more interested to see whether any of my employees that have been terminated have a no and have logged in after their termination date. So we have a few things we have to do. And I don't think this can be done in, I, in Excel. I think we have to go to IDEA and we have to import these two files. Again, it's rather strange that we have to go to desktop. I want an Excel file. I want the Excel file called All Employees. Next. Now, this is quite important. Import the empty cells as zeros. And here we have some zeros. This means these employees have not been terminated. It's almost essential that we actually do this because otherwise idea is going to be confused as to whether this is a date or whether this is some gobbledygook. Um, we're good but I really am not interested in the people with those zeros there. Let's just get the rest of the data. Uh, it's Excel. Next. And it says we can do that, but the nice thing is we'll do that. Uh, there, there are no zeros over here, so we should be okay. There we go. Now, open idea, import the all employees. I'm, I'm right over here. Import the employees, show a screenshot of the first 10 rows of data. So how about we say first 10 rows of data would be where this goes to number 10. And so a screenshot of that for number one would be good. Number two, a screenshot of 
this. The first 10 rows, all the way up to number 10, would answer us there. Now, we want to identify employees that were terminated and have not been disabled. So terminated and not been disabled. We have to do this in two steps. I need to go here, and I'm only interested in those that have a termination date. So I'm going to do analysis, extract, direct, and we'll call this terminated. And the criteria is um, we can make it I'm going to go here. I'm going to use one of these things here. I'm going to use the function year. That the year of the termination date, I want it to be actually greater than zero, but we're going to go greater than the year 1800. So let's just check. It's happy. Um, the file name is going to be called terminated, and this is the case where the date is greater than the date 1800. I suppose you could, could do 2017 if you like. We'll do OK. Uh, terminated, we should have about 50 records. We have 57 records terminated with a terminated date. By the way, if you do want to know uh, what the earliest and the latest dates are, we can go in here. We can go to field statistics. We can do this, we can click on date, there it has terminated date, earliest date, latest date, so I suppose we could have said uh, the year less than 2018. So terminated, there they are. Now, uh, what was the question again? I got a little lost. Have not been disabled, they have a no indicator. So we have to go here, and now I have to do a join. And let me just see what I want to do. I want my primary database to be network users. So I'm going to cancel this, highlight this, and go again, join, primary database, network users. I don't have to use any criteria over here. My secondary database will be terminated. I'm going to join the databases on employee number, employee ID. And let me see, I want the matches only. And let me see if I want all the fields. Mm. Fields. I don't really need this because I'm going to get it anyway from the other database. We'll do OK. So here we go. I'm going to go to all my employees and I'm just going to look for matches for the terminated people. That won't answer the question. I have to go with a two step process here. And let's just click OK and hope for the best. I got it. So this comes from the network users. These are the people that have been terminated. And what I now care about for this over here is they were terminated. So they are over there and they have not been disabled. They have a no. So we're going to go back here. They have been terminated, and they have a no. And we can see we have a couple here with no's. So it's going to be another extract, and I'm going to now I just need to extract all those with a no over here. So it's going to be here, extract direct. Um, you know, I should have given this thing another name because it just ended up with the default name, join. That's very exciting. 
and so let's call it here file name and we'll call it uh, not halted and the criteria is going to be that the field access halted equals we have the word no there but I can't just write no I need to go here I did this up here to the, uh, the quotes and I need to put the word no and now if the access halted is no I'm gonna get them okay and here we go we have 21 employees they have been terminated because they were from here and in the network users access halted equals no so these are not halted and these are my answers to number three number four they have been terminated they have not been halted and they have access to system after their termination date so I have a termination date here and I care about those cases where the last login was after the termination date so I'm going to go and do an extract and the extract is going to be we can call it accessed after termination it's pretty long okay and now my criteria is going to be where the last login is after the termination date so let me go here and I don't know if this is going to work if I go last login minus termination date if that's a positive number that will get them but I don't think that will work I'm going to go last login greater than last login greater than termination date and let's go here and we do okay and Bob's your uncle that's a British saying and it says last login after termination and we can actually see here July 1st, June, July, June, these dates are after that date. And I updated the case to give it a, a slightly more modern feel. So I have 2020 dates and 2020 years and 2018 and 2019. So um, let's go here. Um, this is the answer to number four. Um, Number five, how often do you think that we should actually run the test that we just did? Um, and I'm going to give you a little clue here. You know, you could split the answer in two and say for a large company, this is what I think. For a small company, this is what I think. And give uh, reasons for your answer. Remember that people that have been terminated are quite often very disgruntled and we definitely don't want them to have access and we don't definitely don't want them to access our systems all sorts of uh, mischief can occur this is a nice one you should enjoy it uh, I can't show you the screenshot now but if you go into our eCampus in the capstone folder we have um, this Journal of Accountancy article. Answer the questions. It should be um, should be nice to do. Um, look up the details in the Federal Bureau of Prisons website. What date was he released? And there's our eCampus. Uh, that one should be quite quite easy. And I have another thing here. What analytics tests could we run to test whether employees are logging on as somebody else to get the job done 
and this is sort of a quote from the article uh, over there and uh, I want to know how we could have detected it uh, this should be something like a quarter to a third of a page um, you have a nice table for your answers there you have this and so I think uh, this is our capstone and and I, I think you're going to enjoy it it's uh, it's the newest version and it's the one of course that I like the most than what happened there okay uh, I will see you at the residency and for now it's Bye-bye.